EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Just as we were ready for air, it was the Colts emerging from the locker room to great fanfare here in Indy. They're ready to go as the Colts get set to match up with the Cincinnati Bengals. And they will wrangle them down a couple yards shy of the 30. Cincinnati set to take over once again. First and 10 at their own 28-yard line. First carry for Giovanni Bernard. And not a lot of daylight, not really any daylight inside as he's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Brings up second down. No Good strong tackle by DeForest Buckner. Remember, the Colts gave up their first round pick, number 13 overall, to get him from San Francisco. And they certainly think he's worth it. A first carry for Samaj P. Ryan. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Three and out. A real danger here on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 12. So the shotgun snap to Allen. And that is incomplete. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. It's fourth down. So on fourth down, on comes the left-footed punter, Kevin Huber, to punt it away. Taken from just outside the 30. It'll be a 40-yard punt, eight on the return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Indy set to go on offense once more. Rivers and the Colts going to come up first and 10 at the 40. Naeem Hines, his first carry. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Someone's looking fresh, and his own line is definitely licking their chops. Everyone likes to run block if you're an offensive lineman. Nice early burst, nice gain, too. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. This is Hines. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. A gain of 13. It's a first down. That's a very nice game there. Confidence building run. Love the execution up front. The way he pressed the hole, absolutely perfect. Back to back good plays. Have him on the move on first down. Here's Hines. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Mike Daniels on the tackle. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and blow, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on, third down. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle, going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. And that'll bring up fourth down as his Cincy defense stands up on third. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over in your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, and we're not talking about our on-air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual I know. for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. 
And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. His pass. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. At their 49-yard line. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. From the gun, it's Allen. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. A gain of 13, it's a first down. A gain of 13 yards. And a Bengal first down. Bernard. And he'll get four here down to the 35-yard line. Giovanni Bernard. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Now a carry for Bernard. And he's going to get this pretty close to a first down at the Colts' 26. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight-ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. First down, and they're going to throw with Allen. Wide open receiver complete. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. First, a good pick up there of 22. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. Here's Allen to throw it. Allen hit. He lost the football. But I think a Bengal player was able to get in there. He was. And they'll keep possession of the football. We hear them discuss red zone efficiency a lot, CD, and they almost gave that one up in the red zone. Luckily, they'll have another shot. And you and I both know that every offensive coordinator, play caller in the league, they take particular delight in their red zone calls because those are the payoff ones. But you can't call a play if your team doesn't have the ball. Got to secure it. And he'll get this down only to the 18. Only a yard there, and that'll bring us to third and goal. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. What a stand this would be if they can get the stop here. Third and goal. Working out of the shotgun. Here's Allen. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. Well, this is what happens when you get behind the chains, as people like to say, when you have obvious passing situations. Hard to vary it up and fool the defense. And you hate those situations if you're an O-lineman, right? Oh, without a doubt, because you just know they're coming, and you never know exactly how. They can be exotic in their blitzes, or their athletic ability just takes over. Bullock's kick is good. And the Bengals are on the board first here. It's 3 nothing. After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. And able to get this air to the 25. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. 
And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. First down yardage on the first play of the drive. Give him 14. First and 10 at the 39-yard line. They run with Hines. Making the play defensively, Carl Lawson. Carl Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. The 44-yard line. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. They run the counter. It's Hines. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. He lost four there, and it's third down. Well, they set the power set out there, and their job is to be man-on-man man and move people so they can run the football. But that time, too many men didn't get moved in the box defensively. They end up throwing him for a loss. On third down, Rivers. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. So instead of fourth down, first down. Well, so much for winning the down, you put a lot of emphasis on because third down is key for offense and defense. Instead, you're going to stay on the field and start a new set of downs. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. Caught left side by Hilton. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you may curl a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Brought down back in Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game, and that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. 23 yards on the play. Great mix of play calling so far. Three runs, three passes. All three passes have been completions. First and goal. I think on defense now, you have to almost take a chance. Rely on your scouting. Pick a play you think they would run here and just load up for it and see what happens. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. It'll be a three-yard pickup, and it brings up second and goal. And, Brandon, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. They'll try to run with Hines, and he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Naeem Hines taking it in, and the Colts have taken the lead. A strong, determined run there, Charles, to get in for six points. This is why it's such a team game, isn't it? And I know that sounds really generic, and it sounds almost trite, but the blocks were made up front, offensive line, collective victory at the line of scrimmage and downfield, and how about the finish to the run all the way into the end zone?
Sanchez now. He'll kick it away following the touchdown. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The Bengals offense now, they head back onto the field. First down, Allen. That's caught by the tight end, Drew Sample. They'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. A, six -yard a gain of six there on first. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Bengals in control of the football as they've got it with a second and four coming up. A draw play, Bernard, and he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here, third and five. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Allen from the gun on third down. Complete to his tight end sample. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Excellent play there on third down. Give him 25 yards. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. From the gun, Allen. That's complete to the tight end sample. And he's got this down to the 35. 12 more yards for him there. It's a first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. So they fake the handoff. Now Allen. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. They'll run it here with Bernard. Had a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. At the 45-yard line, a three-yard gain on the play brings up third down. And the Bengals on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and forever. Operating from the gun. Allen. He's going to drop this one down to Bernard. And he'll go down at the 28. He'll get 17 back there, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. I think that we all figured when he caught it that short of the marker that the defense almost relaxed and said, we got this covered. And then all of a sudden, space to run after the catch. And now they're screaming, somebody get him down. Fortunately, they got to him and forced the fourth down. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. And they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. to six. So chalk that down as an eight-play drive capped with a field goal. Yeah, as a friend of mine used to say, they were moving and grooving for a while, but they couldn't keep the momentum going enough to get a touchdown out of it.
Randy Bullock. After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass rush. Whether it's the guys up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the football. We'll see if they can disrupt it here. He did have the touchdown run earlier, but not a heck of a lot more than that throughout this game. No, not at all. In fact, I would say that this defense has done as good of a job on him as they have on any runner in recent memory. On second down now. It's Hines, and he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. So if you've been playing defense in this one, there's a little bit of the good and some bad because they did give up the touchdown run to him earlier but shut him down otherwise. Outside of that, you're exactly right. I would say they've contained him very well. Now the rookie out of Wisconsin, this is Jonathan Taylor. And he is going to have a Colts first down. At least it appears that way. And he got it by maybe the length of a football. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Draw play. This is Hines. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Give the Colts 13 yards and a first down. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Now it's Hines. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. On second and 11 now. Rivers, that's into the hands of Pascal. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. Right back to him on first down. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. Josh Bynes. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. Really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. On second and nine, Rivers. A good throw here, finding Pascal. River, that throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. First down marker at the 31. It's third down. They'll find Hines out of the backfield. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. Three yards, all they can muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? 
a 52-yard attempt. And this won't get there. Won't be on line either. It's no good. Off to the right. And this score will stay right where it is. NFL kickers nowadays, they make things look so easy because normally from this range, about two out of three. And this is not an easy kick. Yeah, 20 years ago, you get where he was in that 50 range, maybe a little over. And it's a big kick, but now we just, if they leave it short, you're like, whoa, what happened? And that's that's what we have here. Yeah, you're right. 20 years ago, we were saying run some more plays and get closer. Now we think they're definitely within range, and you're exactly right. When it comes up short, there has to be something that went wrong because they have plenty of legs. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. Credit the sack to the Oregon Duck to Forrest Buckner. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you get three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. This one hauled in by Sample. And he can only get this to the 42-yard line. And that is not near enough. They do get 10 back, but still a ways to go on fourth. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. So possession goes over here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And last time out, another missed field goal. So maybe their confidence wavering a little bit right now in the kicking game. And I'm with you on that. I think at this stage, they'd love to not run him back out there in a tough situation. But let's face it, they may have to. So right now, the head coach is talking to the offense coordinator and saying, call this game like we're going to put it in the end zone. Let's try and take the field goal out of it. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Nice, satisfying run on first down for the offense, picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. Second and five now. Rivers looking middle, and it's incomplete. Zach Paschal, the intended receiver, and it's third and five. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. From the gun, Rivers. Now a hit, and Rivers lost the football. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. To punt on fourth down, here's Rigoberto Sanchez. Alex Erickson, deep for Cincinnati. Now a fair catch is called for and taken a few yards across midfield. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach 
can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? And he'll take this from 147 yard line to the other. A gain of six. Brings up second and four. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. A throw for Boyd, but it's intercepted. Picked up by Kenny Moore. Trump, there he goes, right side. And he will bring it back. An interception return for a Colts TD. We constantly talk about defenders having great vision and being able to see plays unfold and make their own plays. But you also have to have good feel as well because you can't see everything out there. See the play unfold, feel what's going on, and then get into the right spot and make your own play. And in this case, it turned out to be a highlight one. And he'll bang that one through. Makes the score Colts 14, Bengals 6. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And following the pick six, and they have decent field position in throwing that pick six. We'll see how they attack this drive. And I think all you say to your guy is, listen, let's just take care of the football a little bit better. Make some better decisions on this drive, and they'll probably help him a little bit with maybe some really high percentage throws early to let him get settled back yeah, in. But they told him, and they told us, they've got confidence. That, that's not a problem. Yeah, not a problem at all. They just want to make sure they get things settled down a little bit for their offense and give their defense a little bit of a chance to rest. He was looking for his favorite target, A.J. Green, that time. That'll bring up second down. Well, we just saw something you don't ordinarily see, and that's him trying to deep ball after throwing a pick six on his previous pass. Normally, they give him something safe to get his confidence back. Instead, they let him fire it downfield, albeit unsuccessfully. Throw right side into the hands of the tight end sample. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. From the gun, Allen. Boyd's the target, and he has it over the middle. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. It's another 10 yards on that one, and another first down. At the 44-yard line. Now the Bengals urging everybody to get back to the line of scrimmage. Looking to throw again on second down. Allen looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Boyd. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Now Allen again. Out to the left. He's got Sample there. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Seven yards to pick up there. Second and three at the Colts' 44-yard line. Set, set, set. 
So we have reached halftime here in what's an eight-point game. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Rodgers on the return. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. We have not seen much on offense from either side. These last few drives, it has been a struggle, hasn't it? Totally, and you're thinking to yourself right now, if you're on offense trying to get things figured out, okay, we self-scout every week in our game plan. How many things do we do at certain times? What are our tendencies? Time to go to some of those tendency breakers and try and create some offense. They always have those in their back pocket, don't they? You have to. And if you don't keep abreast of what you're doing, you lock into a rhythm and make it easy for the opposition. Looking for tendency breakers right now. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive. 12 yards. the delay here's Hines not much there maybe a couple up to the 35 the ball Brandon we talk all the time about those hybrid players guys who can do more than one thing and I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today you are a true hybrid part linebacker part cover guy and coming up sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively From the 35 on second down, Rivers. That's complete to Jack Doyle, the tight end. Complete four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Third and short yardage, Rivers. That's complete to Hines out of the backfield. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. The screen was executed and completed, but where's the worry on the play? How many times is a quarterback going to get hit? Because offensive linemen have to do an acting job of making sure it looks like they're whiffing on blocks. But you got to slow them down a little bit, because if you don't, that's a lot of big guys coming at your quarterback in a big, fast way. And boy, he can get hurt. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Rivers incomplete on first down. Here's second and 10. to throw again. Rivers looking for his running back and he's got him. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. He'll get only three there so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that you can get out to your running back and it could turn into a big game downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. And Pascal's got it. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. Whenever we talk about moving the sticks and controlling the football, there's a great example right there. Those are the third downs you need to convert to win football games. We're in the third quarter of this one, and this is a tight one. In order to maintain pace, keep the ball away from the other team and put points on the board. Those are the plays they need to continue to convert. And he will go down outside of the pocket for a sack. Tried to get away, but could not. Carl Lawson able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. That's his second sack of the game in the best defensive ends. They do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive lineman across from them, what moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. T.Y. Hilton, the intended receiver. And that'll make it third down. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. Let's get off the field, D. Let's get off the field, D. Third and long for Rivers. 
And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. And Charles, they're certainly still right in this game, but they need that offense to wake up and in a hurry. Yeah, I like the way you put it. They certainly did seem to sleepwalk a bit in the first half. Now that their defense has done its job, it's their turn now to go out and try and get some points. And the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Drew Sample, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. In on the sack, the former Buckeye, Tyquan Lewis. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. Punting now is Huber as he sends it away. And he'll take it on this side of midfield. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Colts are set up well as they take over first and ten on the short side of the field. And the Colts coming out now. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. They'll run on first down. Hines, this will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. Sometimes that's a danger, putting that jumbo set out there. You just get a lot of bodies massed in one location. You could wind up with 18, 20, maybe even all 22 in the box, and there's nowhere to run the football. Rivers from the gun on third down. And that'll bring up fourth down as his Cincy defense stands up on third. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Rodrigo Blankenship for the Colts field goal. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. And no, it doesn't get there. Hits the crossbar, bounces back out. He had it on line, but it comes up about a rotation short. Well, he had that one on target. That's half the battle. The other half of the battle, however, is distance. And he nearly had that, too. But it was the crossbar that said otherwise, and that'll deny him a shot at three. So the long field goal misses, and now the reverse. You're in a tough spot defensively. They'll start the drive at the 43. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. Three yards the gain there, second down. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. They'll break the huddle and come out with four receivers, three of them to the right side, second and seven. Allen going to throw. 
And he will find his man on the outside. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. On third down, Bernard, and he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. Running lanes read a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Throwing on first down is Allen. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. There just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and 10. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Another attempt, another incompletion, and when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long game or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points, and the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. On the screen, Bernard. And they'll get him down at the 34, and he's going to be short of the first by a few yards. The screen does get him nine, but it also brings up a fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. What you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. And here's a throw taken in by Boyd. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. A gain of 20. A good pick up there of 20 yards. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Allen now on first down. That's complete right around the eight. And oh, he coughed it up, and the Colts pick it up. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. I know one thing, the team that had the ball and was driving, they're going to feel horrible. But the team that was on defense, they we got to give them a little bit of credit, able to hang in there and force a key turnover. In the red zone, though, had a chance to tie it and an opportunity missed. Now a first carry for their fullback. And he is in. Touchdown, Bengals. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Bengals are a two-point conversion away from tying this football game. Well, they had their chances in the first half, you remember, but had to settle for two field goals. This time, they come away with six. I think they actually got affirmation about what they were doing by getting a touchdown because the field goals means they got in range but couldn't quite finish it off. This time, they broke through, and that's great for the old confidence. And on the sideline, difference of a feeling between three and six, is it astronomical or it, no? It, it, it can be at times, that's for sure. A lot of times, the field goal feels like a disappointment. The touchdown, well, that tells you you're getting it done. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. Rodgers on the return. 
And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. And the last time that they were on the field, a little demoralizing. Missed field goal. You know, always feel like you want to get it in the end zone, but then, oh, well, at least we're going to get three. Didn't go through the goalpost, so. It does test the mental processes of the team, though, doesn't it? Because when you miss a field goal, it's amazing how fast they want to turn on the guy kicking the ball. But you need to keep his confidence up because how many times have we seen games where it comes down to the stretch? And guess what? You need that guy to make the big kick for your team to move on or to win a game. Make sure you keep him happy. Make sure you keep him comfortable. I'm sure you always treated the kicker nicely, though, right? You know, truthfully, I did. Good. I always did because those guys, they won us a whole lot of games. They run again with Hines. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly as he stopped for no gain. Second down. One of the best around, Big Geno Atkins there on the stop. An eight-time Pro Bowler, including each of the last six seasons. Third quarter, all tied up. This is second and ten. They'll try to throw here. Rivers taken in by the tight end, Doyle. River. Five yards, now it's third and five. It's a gain of five. Brings up third and five. That's the end of the third. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Colts on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This will be third and five. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. On first and 10, Rivers. He's got Jack Doyle. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards and a first down completion. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And he's going to get this inside the 30. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. The first down throw here for Rivers. Left side, Doyle with it. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you get much more balance than this. Big-time run, big-time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. Yeah, he's got it. 
And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. A gain of seven that time, second goal. And he's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. And he's got his man. It's Hilton for the Colts touchdown. Touchdown pass, and the Colts have broken our tie as they take the lead. So second and goal there from the one, they go to the air. And the perfect down to throw the football in this sequence. Second down is always kind of the, do they throw it, do they run it? They worked it out to perfection on that one by throwing it into the end zone. Extra point right down the middle, and the lead is now 21-14. 14. 14. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. Now it's Wilson. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. The Bengal offense now gets set to head back out onto the field. And now after the touchdown a moment ago, they work from behind in a seven-point game in this fourth quarter. Plenty of time on the clock. First down, and they're going to throw with Allen. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Tyler Boyd, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. Second and 10 now from the 27. Throwing again, Allen. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. A gain of 13. It's a first down. A gain of 13 yards. First down, Cincinnati. So the shotgun snap to Allen. That's complete to the tight end sample. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. And he's taken down inside the 30. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Allen to throw once more. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sack back at the 38. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Another try after the first down sack. Allen, and that's incomplete. Giovanni Bernard, the intended receiver out of the backfield. But now it's third down. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. 
And the Bengals on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This will be third and 19. Working out of the shotgun, here's Allen. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. A 55-yard attempt. Normally, you'd say well within his range. A little surprised he came up short. And he knew it immediately, didn't he? They are so calibrated, aren't they? They can tell the touch, the feel. When they put the foot to the ball, whether it's going to be good or not, he knew immediately he didn't have that one. Rivers now to throw on first down. A good throw here, finding Pascal. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. On second down, here's a keeper by the QB. And he's going to be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield stripe. Sam Hubbard showing his strength and quickness there, a loss of four. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. They'll find Hines out of the backfield. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. The Bengals set to take over. And they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. DeForest Buckner picks up his second sack of the afternoon. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. Now following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Another try after the first down sack. Allen. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground, incomplete. And the Bengals on third down, not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third and 17. And that is incomplete. So it looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. Here's Kevin Huber now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And now a fair catch called for and taken just outside the 40-yard line. Just 34 yards on the punt there, no return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. River's going to bring the Colts up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. And he'll drop here to throw. The pass underneath, here's Hines with it. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. 
I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for them there, didn't they? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They got to go thank the guys on D. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves them with a very manageable second and one. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Seven yards there and a first down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. First quarter, Charles, you really emphasized the importance of winning the turnover battle as a visiting team, as an underdog. They haven't forced a single turnover in this game. And right now they're losing, so no turnovers might lead to no victory. That is incomplete. Rivers pass. Incomplete on the throwaway. Brings up a third down and 10 yards to go. Another incompletion would certainly be ideal defensively. A big play now. This is third and 10. Rivers to throw it. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. And he's going to get this inside the 30. It'll be a gain of 17 in an Indianapolis first down. Could just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. On first down, it's Hines. Tackle made there by Josh Bynes. I know the game's not over, but there's got to be a sense of satisfaction right now for the guy carrying the football a bunch today. 99 yards, and he has enough time to go over the century mark. Well, you got to give it to him again, right? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. You're not worried about losing yardage here. You're not worried about any of that. You just want to get him to the promised land for every runner, 100 yards or more in a game. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. It'll be a five-yard pickup there, and it will take us to the two-minute warning. Four. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Working out of the gun, Rivers. Throw left side complete. That's Doyle. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. So they come up on second down. If they can get another run like we just saw, would likely put an end to this thing. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Hines. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. Shotgun now. Here's an inside give. And he's able to pick up the first before he's brought down inside the five at the four. First, just a gain of a yard, but it's going to set him up with a first and goal. Touchdown, 
It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. The Colts in victory formation now as they take the knee. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. A kneel down here from Rivers, and that should be it. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? <laughs> and the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So this one winds up an Indianapolis victory, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Colts are winners as we say so long from Indianapolis.